Hey y'all, so we want to determine the magnitude of the uh, velocity and acceleration of this peg P. The uh, bar AB rotates counterclockwise. We see this counterclockwise rotation of bar AB, and we want to figure out the magnitude of the acceleration of point P. To demonstrate this, I made this simulation in which the bar, in this case, the bar rotates at a steady angular velocity in the counterclockwise direction, and we're trying to figure out the acceleration and the velocity of this red dot as it moves upward. And it may not look like it at first, but that's exactly what, what's going on here at point P. The linkage CD is fixed in a vertical position, and, and linkage AB rotates counterclockwise. It has a counterclockwise rotation of 2 radians per second, so an angular velocity 2 radians per second, and an angular acceleration of 3 radians per second squared. And we know the length of the, de of the device is 4 feet. We also know that point P is constrained to move in the vertical direction, so it has to move straight up and down by linkage CD. And I can decompose that into vector form in first the radial direction and then in the tangential direction. So I have my radial component of velocity and my tangential component. And if I wrote this out in vector form, the velocity of point P is equal to the velocity in the radial direction, the magnitude of that, times the unit vector acting in the radial direction, plus the velocity in the tangential direction multiplied by the unit vector in the tangential direction. So here's your tang unit vector in the tangential direction, unit vector in the radial direction, and multiplied by these two constants. The magnitude of this velocity, of course, is simply the square root of vr squared plus v theta squared, where vr is given by the relationship, the relatively simple relationship, that vr is equal, simply equal to r dot, and v theta is equal to r times theta dot. And I can do something similar to find the magnitude of the acceleration. So I've got the radial and tangential components of the acceleration. These components are not so simple. I've got AR is equal to R double dot minus R theta dot squared. And A theta is equal to R times theta double dot plus 2 R dot theta dot. So ultimately what we're trying to find are each of these individual parameters. So if we knew R double dot and we knew theta and we knew um, uh, r, or the value of r, we could calculate ar and a theta, and if we knew r dot, we could calculate vr, and if we knew r, we could calculate v theta, plug those back in, and we can get the magnitudes of the velocity and the acceleration. So the first thing we want to do is draw a relationship between r and theta, and I've drawn this triangle to show you the trigonometry, but I can move the triangle over to this location. Now I have a relationship between r and l, so I've got r, l, and this angle is theta, so the cosine of theta is equal to L over R. And that, of course, means that R is equal to L over cosine theta. And there's a couple of things we could look at it is the limits of this thing. So if theta is equal to 0 degrees, this bar, a, linkage AB, is horizontal. And that means that R is simply equal to L, which is uh, what we would expect. And if theta was equal to 90 degrees, if this angle was 90 degrees, this was straight up and down, that means that R approaches infinity. So these, uh, they begin to cross, the ball would accelerate upward, and eventually its radial position would grow to infinity once these two bars were parallel. And you saw that in the simulations, that ball began to accelerate rapidly once they, the uh, theta approached 90 degrees. I could rewrite this expression as L uh, times the secant of theta. 1 over cosine theta is simply the secant of theta. And I can calculate the R dot, which is equal to dr with the chain rule, dr d theta d theta dt. So don't forget the chain rule, but I take the derivative, the derivative of secant theta. I've got L times the tangent of theta times the secant of theta times d theta d th dt, which is simply theta dot. Now if I plug in numbers for both r and r dot, I'll come up with a value of r of about 4.6 feet, and r dot I've come up with about 5.33 feet per second. And this is evaluated, remember, at theta equals 30 degrees and at an angular velocity of 2 radians per second. Finding r double dot is going to be more complicated. It's going to be the, the sum of three terms. And it'll be the sum of three terms because I need to invoke the product rule because first we're going to take the derivative of tangent theta, and then we're going to take the derivative of secant theta multiplied by tangent theta times theta dot. And then for the third term, we're going to take the derivative of theta dot, which will simply be theta double dot. So let's take the derivative of tangent theta first. So what I've got is L times the derivative of tangent theta, which is secant squared theta. And remember, I need the theta dot in here as well because of the chain rule. And then I'll rewrite secant theta times theta dot. So let's do the second term now where we take the derivative of secant theta. 
So for this term, I've repeated the L tangent theta, and the derivative of secant theta is tangent theta times secant theta. And again, I've included theta dot for that derivative, and I've included this extra theta dot that was there to begin with. So let's take the derivative of theta dot now to, to finish out the derivative. And here's the third term, it's just L tangent theta secant theta times the derivative of theta dot. And I'll combine terms and clean up R double dot. And after combining terms, this is the expression that I get. And I'll plug numbers into this. And what I get is this long expression where, again, I'm evaluating this at theta equals 30 degrees, an angular velocity of 2 radians per second, and an angular acceleration now, theta double dot, of 3 radians per second squared. And what I come up with for r double dot is a value of about almost 39 feet per second squared. So now I know r, r dot, and r double dot, and I also know theta, theta dot, and theta double dot, and I'm ready to plug into those original expressions to find the magnitude of the velocity and the acceleration. So here I've plugged in numbers for those. I've got r dot is 5.33 feet per second, so that's vr, and v theta is r times theta dot, which is 4.619 feet times 2 radians per second, and I come up with a little over 9 feet per second for v theta. And I plug in numbers again for ar and a theta using r double dot and r and theta dot squared, plug in for a theta, and I come up with a little over 20 feet per second squared for uh, the radial acceleration. In the tangential component of acceleration, I get a little over 35 uh, feet per second squared. And when I plug these numbers in for the magnitude of the velocity, I come up with 10.7 feet per second. So here's the answer for the magnitude of the velocity. In the magnitude of the acceleration, I come up with 40.6 feet per second squared.